Listen, you know, as I waggishly say to people, if you hated the 99.95% survival rate of COVID, you're really going to hate what's coming next uh, when the economy does what it's about to do. Okay, so let's please talk about this because this has been deeply disturbing to me. I'm fascinated that nobody gives a shit about it. Nobody talks about it or virtually nobody talks about it. The Economist did have a piece in it. The Wall Street Journal had a piece recently, but nobody's been talking about it. So you agree that the debt is one of the top, if not the top problems we face as a country. Yes, and it's the debt, it's the government debt, but it's also, we have national levels of indebtedness that are, those are two separate things. Government debt is part of this other debt, and that's just the debt. And to add one more layer of nuance, we also have IOUs, which are liabilities that, that aren't even usually included, right? And those IOUs are underfunded, Social Security, Medicare, pensions, things like that. Um, so when you add those, when you add both our, and, and Bridgewater Associates, Ray Dalio did this, when they added all of this stuff up, they discovered that we had about $220 trillion of IOUs and debt on the books right now, right? You just have to laugh because it's I'm like- sorry. I, have to, I don't know what other thing I can do, but laugh. I mean, that's so insane. So, okay. Yeah. So Reed, pull up that the debt clock again, if you don't mind, Reed. So, so this is just debt. You, yeah. Yeah, this is just debt. So let's let's talk about this for a moment and the interest per debt, the interest on the debt. Mm-hmm. Um okay, so it, run us through this. Like let's pre- so my audience is very smart and uh, but they're not uh, you know educated in every topic like me. Okay. Just I'm not educated in every topic. So run run us through why should anybody care about this well who cares because it's obvious now that literally almost nobody cares so why should people be caring about this yeah the reason they should be caring so you see that 34.896 trillion dollar up in the top left there the so-called national debt first let me just first off they confuse these things all the time peter okay so they'll tell us you'll often see also quoted in that top left box something that's around 26 trillion they call that debt held by the public right which basically means debt that we owe to banks, foreign banks, you know, whatever. The rest of that is debt that we, they say, oh, we owe that to ourselves. It's Enron accounting, but that's money that people paid in their FICA, went out in their social security, that little box that comes out of your paycheck, right? It goes to FICA. The government spends that and then puts a treasury IOU, that's part of the debt, back in that little thing. There's no social security trust fund, right? There's a big old pile of treasury IOUs in there. And then sometimes they don't count that as part of the national debt. That debt clock you have there absolutely yeah. counts that. So so that you have to count it. There's no such thing as pocket A borrows from pocket B and it doesn't count. It's just it doesn't work that way. It's like you writing yourself a check for a million bucks. Nothing happened. Right. Um, so so the true debt is thirty four point eight trillion dollars right now. It's just screaming up. And the interest on that now was 102 yeah. billion just in May. We'll see what the what the uh, later figures are when they come out. But that's about 1.3 uh, trillion dollars per year, and it's going up because they're borrowing more and more and more. So by the end of the year, it's going to be 1.6 trillion dollars just in interest payments. It's an okay. astonishing. Let me, let, let me pause you because I don't think people understand the concept of a trillion so let's put that in perspective so the way that i think about a billion is a thousand million Mm -hmm. so how can we help people understand what a trillion is it's hard here's one way (laughs) um so let's imagine let's imagine i have a a a thousand dollar bill a thousand dollar bill right not a hundred but a thousand and, and let's imagine now that if I had a stack this tall of them, about four inches, Peter, I have a million dollars, right? And to have a hundred million dollars, right? You know, it's a slightly taller stack. By the time you're a billionaire, Peter, you have a stack that's about 370 feet tall, just thousand dollar bills, 370 feet. But to be a trillionaire, that's 68.9 <laughs> miles, right? So imagine oh you're gosh. in your car, wow. you're driving along, wow. and there's a there's a tipped over stack of thousand dollar bills, and you have to drive for an hour at highway speeds to get to that trillion, 
right? It's hard to go from that million, which is four inches. We can get our minds around that. But 68 yeah, miles, dude, you're, you're a satellite in space if that stacks straight in the air. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So that helps us to understand that. So it's when you say <laughs> that, Reed, could you please keep that chart up there, that, that uh, um, debt clock? So when you say, like, I'm looking at the U.S., like, when you say that the interest, like explain that, like who is paying that and who are we paying that to? Because some people have fallaciously argued that we're, it doesn't matter because we just owe, owe it to ourselves. Like yeah, tell that to the pensioner and the retiree, et cetera. So, so could you like who, so we owe this money, who do we owe this money to? To anybody who's bought a U.S. Treasury bill, bond, or note, right? Some piece of Treasury paper. Somebody who's bought that. That could be you, right? You could you could buy Treasury notes, and they have to pay you the interest. But when you carve it up, it's basically about about a third of it's heading overseas. Uh, it goes it belongs to foreign central banks. Um, some of it might belong to Russia, for instance, and they've seized that, and they're going to use that accumulation to give to Ukraine, right? But it's it's basically. You, the whole thing of we owe it to ourselves, that's kind of a Paul Krugman concept, and it's a dumb concept. It, it's not true. If we owed it to ourselves collectively, that would be one thing, but it's highly concentrated in a very few hands, right? So, you know, if Bill Gates has uh, $30 billion of U.S. Treasury bonds, and so we end up paying him, you know, $600 million in interest that year, um, that goes to him. It, we, we owe it to him, right, for instance. So, so I have heard this, I, I was going to not prejudice you, but I think it's just truly insane. I have heard this co coffee for Reed, $5, five pounds. Thank you. I've heard this. Thank you, Reed. Reed's done doing a great job. Uh, he really is. So I've heard this just truly insane concept, Chris, that, well, it doesn't make any difference. We're the world's largest currency. We should, we should just not pay it back. What is your... What are the consequences if we default on our debt? Like, what what is that? What does that even mean? Well, um, it's that's an extinction level event, an ELE. That's an ELE. Uh, it, it, there's no coming back from that. So, um, when if we did that, so first off, we'd have to say, well, who are we defaulting on? Is that everybody external? Okay, so that's China, it's Japan, it's Saudi Arabia, it's France, it's Italy, it's everybody who owes owns some. You know, so is it just are we just defaulting to other central banks at the country level or are we defaulting to individuals, private corporations, too? Right. So if we just defaulted externally, well, nobody's going to take our dollars anymore. Right. And they're, so now what happens? Like, well, you're the United States. We're, we don't like your money, because if I get a U.S. dollar in exchange for something I've sold you could be oil, could be a car, transistor, something. If I don't take your U.S. dollars, what am I taking instead? Well. Now we're down to barter really quick. Here, here's a ship of grain for those CPUs. Um, or we have to trade them something like gold or something solid. And, and that's actually already afoot because on February 22nd, sorry, 28th, 2022, February 28th, mm -hmm. 2022, the United States seized Russia's sovereign reserves, which made them neither sovereign nor reserves. And the BRICS, the Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, plus 120 other countries now, have just gone on a mad scramble to get themselves off the US dollar payment system and onto another system. And oops, they are tying that in, in large measure to gold. Uh, so when or if the United States no longer has the capability to export dollars, w things get hard for people in a hurry. So everything that's internationally exportable just is going to go shooting through the roof in other terms, right? Gold price of oil, anything that's not nailed down, it's going to, it'll be very chaotic. Um, so that would be a period where we would see skyrocketing commodity prices, where we would see um, whole systems that fail to function anymore, right? There's this huge, people don't understand that we don't have like a US system and a Japanese system and a French system. These are all one big giant integrated blob at this point in time. The markets trade in unison 24 hours a day. If you, if the United States defaulted on its debt, yeah. it would seize that entire system up and that would be Humpty Dumpty, all the King's men, nobody could put that back together again. Okay. So I have, I am privileged in my life that I have a unique position to talk to literally some of the smartest people in the anglosphere. 
And when I sit these people down, much smarter than I am who have domain specific knowledge in this stuff, they all tell me the same thing. And I want your, I, I want a reality check on this. There's no way we can pay it back. That's the first thing they say. It, it, so is that, is that, are they smoking crack or I mean, or is that, does that align with reality? No, that's true. There, there's n nothing we can do at this point. Okay. Okay. That's such a sobering thought. I have to kind of, okay. I have to kind of take that in. Okay. So given that there's nothing that we can do, is that the reason why Biden, RFK, Trump, et cetera, is that the reason why no one's talking about it? Like why, why isn't any, why isn't this like front page news all the time? Like, why isn't this, why isn't, why isn't, why isn't nobody talking about this? Mm, because there, there's, they're all political animals and there is no political, <clears throat> excuse me, any politically palatable solution. So, so when you get to the point of, I can't pay it back, right? Yes. There are only two options at the nation state level. One is what you okay. dredged up. Oh, we'll just default on it. We're not going to pay you, right? You can't do that when you, when you're import trade deficit like what ours in the united states if it was a country would be the 19th largest economy in the world right like we okay. we we are like we're all these like we live a really easy life in the u.s and that's in no small measure because we export a lot of dollars that we print out of thin air and we get a lot of cool stuff right. um real things that would stop and and things would get very chaotic pretty quickly so defaulting not really an option thank you for watching Everything we do is under the umbrella of the National Progress Alliance, nationalprogressalliance.org. It's a nonprofit, independent 501c3. Your generous donations keep us going and keep fueling content like this. So please help us out. Make a donation. We very much appreciate it. Thank you.